The Proto-Italic language is the ancestor of the Italic languages, including notably Latin and thus its descendants, the Romance languages. It is not directly attested in writing, but has been reconstructed to some degree through the comparative method. Proto-Italic descended from the earlier Proto-Indo-European language. Topic: <laughs> Phonology. Topic: <laughs> Consonants. Was an allophone of n before a velar consonant. The voiced fricatives beta and z were in complementary distribution with word initial voiceless fricatives theta, x, x, and s, and were thus originally simply allophones of each other. However, at some point in the Proto-Italic period, the allophony was somewhat disrupted by the loss of the voiceless allophones x and theta, which merged with Scholars disagree on whether to reconstruct Proto-Italic with the phonemes x tilde and theta tilde still present, hence assuming that the merger with was a later aerial change that spread across all extant dialects, possibly occurring simultaneous with or after the loss of the corresponding voiced fricatives, or to reconstruct Proto-Italic with the phonemes voiceless allophones merged into tilde beta and their voiced allophones becoming independent phonemes. Both of these sounds are relatively uncommon cross-linguistically, and eventually they were eliminated in all later languages, but differently in each. Topic. Vowels Was perhaps not a true phoneme, but was inserted before consonants as a prop vowel. It can be reconstructed based on the outcome of the Proto-Indo-European syllabic nasals asterisk m, and asterisk n, which appear in Latin as asterisk m, asterisk n or asterisk im, asterisk in, but also as asterisk m, asterisk n in Osco-Umbrian alongside asterisk m, asterisk n. Thus, it appears necessary to reconstruct, as a distinct sound, Proto-Italic had the following diphthongs. Short, asterisk i, asterisk a, asterisk oi, asterisk o, asterisk o, Long, asterisk i, asterisk a, asterisk oyostov's law remained productive in Proto-Italic. This caused long vowels to shorten when they were followed by a sonorant and another consonant in the same syllable, vrc greater than vrc. As the long diphthongs were also vr sequences, they could only occur word finally, and were shortened elsewhere. Long vowels were also shortened before word final asterisk m. This is the cause of the many occurrences of short asterisk a in, for example, the endings of the a stems or of a verbs. Topic. Prosody Proto-italic words had a fixed stress on the first syllable. This stress pattern probably remained in most descendants. In Latin, it remained during the Old Latin period, after which it was replaced with the classical penultimate stress pattern. Topic. Grammar Topic. Nouns Nouns could have one of three genders, masculine, feminine and neuter. They decline for seven of the eight Proto-Indo-European cases, nominative, vocative, accusative, genitive, dative, ablative and locative. The instrumental case had been lost. Nouns also decline for number in singular and plural. The dual number was no longer distinguished, although a few remnants like Latin duo, ambo, still preserved some form of the inherited dual inflection. Topic: O stems. This is the second declension of Latin. It descends from the Proto-Indo-European thematic declension. Most nouns in this class were masculine or neuter, but there may have been some feminine nouns as well. The genitive singular in asterisk i is of unknown origin, but is found in both Italic and Celtic. It mostly ousted the older presumably inherited genitive in asterisk osjo in Latin. The older form is found in a few inscriptions, such as Popliosio Valesiosio on the Lapis Satricanus. It is also continued in some pronominal genitives, such as quius the nominative plural was originally asterisk os for nouns and adjectives, and asterisk oi for pronominal forms. The distribution in Proto-Italic is unclear, but both endings certainly still existed. The asterisk os ending was replaced altogether in Latin in favor of asterisk oi, whence the classical i. In Osco-Umbrian, the reverse happened, where asterisk oi was replaced with asterisk os, whence oscanus, Umbrian us. In Old Latin, the genitive plural was still generally om, later um. 
It was then reformed based on the astem form asterisk asm, giving the classical orum. Topic astems This class represents the first declension of Latin. It derives primarily from Proto-Indo-European nouns in asterisk a, and contained mostly feminine nouns, but maybe a few masculines. The accusative singular ending would have been asterisk m originally, due to shortening of long vowels before final asterisk m. However, a long vowel is found in the attested forms. This long vowel most likely arose by analogy with the other endings that have a long vowel. The genitive plural ending was originally a pronominal form, pi asterisk a sohom. Topic consonant stems This class contained nouns with stems ending in a variety of consonants. They included root nouns, n stems, r stems, s stems and t stems among others. They are grouped in Latin under the third declension, which also includes the i stems, originally a distinct class. Masculine and feminine nouns declined alike, while neuters had different forms in the nominative, accusative, vocative. Nouns in this class often had a somewhat irregular nominative singular form. This created several subtypes, based on the final consonant of the stem. For most consonant stem nouns, the ending of the nominative, vocative singular was s for masculine and feminine nouns. This ending would cause devoicing, delabialization and or hardening of the stem final consonant, as seen in asterisk snicks above. Neuter nouns had no ending. N stems generally had the ending asterisk o, with the infix asterisk on or maybe asterisk n in the other cases. Neuters had asterisk n in the nom, voc, acc singular, while the stem of the remaining forms is unclear. R stems had asterisk er, alternating with asterisk e r. The alternation in vowel length was lost in Latin, but is preserved in Oscan. S stems had asterisk os for masculines and feminines or asterisk os for neuters. This alternated with asterisk ez or maybe asterisk os in some masculine, feminine nouns in the other forms. The R, N stems were a small group of neuter nouns. These had asterisk or in the nominative, vocative, accusative singular, but asterisk e N in the remaining forms. Other notes, the genitive singular had two possible endings. Both are attested side by side in Old Latin, although the ending S, is may also be from the I stems see below. In Osco-Umbrian, only the I stem ending I's is found. The Latin masculine nominative plural ending S with a long vowel was taken from the I stems. The neuter nominative, vocative, accusative plural originally had short asterisk as the ending, or lengthening of the vowel before the final consonant. Already in italic, this was replaced with the o stem ending asterisk a. The dative and ablative, locative, plural ending would have originally been added directly to the stem, with no intervening vowel. In Latin, there is an intervening e or i, while in osco-umbrian the ending is replaced altogether. It's not clear what the proto-italic situation was. Topic. I stems This class represents the nouns of the Latin third declension that had the genitive plural ending ium rather than um. In Latin, the consonant stems gradually merged with this class. This process continued into the historical era, e.g. in Caesar's time c. 50 BC the I stems still had a distinct accusative plural ending is, but this was replaced with the consonant stem ending s by the time of Augustus c. 1 AD. In Proto-Italic, as in the other Italic languages, I stems were still very much a distinct type and showed no clear signs of merging. Masculine and feminine nouns declined alike, while neuters had different forms in the nominative, accusative, vocative. There were apparently two different forms for the genitive singular. The form ice is found in Osco-Umbrian. However, s appears in early Latin, while there is no sign of asterisk ice. This could reflect the consonant stem ending, but it could also come from asterisk jis. Compare also asterisk woes of the u stems, which is attested in Old Latin, and may represent a parallel formation. The original form of the neuter nominative, vocative, accusative plural was asterisk i. Already in italic, this was extended by adding the o stem ending to it. Topic. U stems The U stems form what is the fourth declension in Latin. They were historically parallel to the I stems, and still showed many similar forms, with J, I being replaced with with U. However, sound changes had made them somewhat different over time. The neuter nominative, vocative, accusative singular must have originally been short asterisk U, but in Latin only long U is found. It is unclear what the origin of this could be. 
It may be a remnant of a dual ending, considering that neuter U stems were rare, and the few that survived tended to occur in pairs. Like the I stems, the U stems had two possible types of genitive singular ending, with an unclear distribution. Asterisk OUS is found in Oscan, and it is also the origin of the usual Latin ending S. However, the Senatus Consultum de Bacchanalibus inscription attests Senatvos, and the ending UIS from asterisk wes is also found in a few sources. The masculine, feminine nominative, vocative plural is not securely reconstructable. Latinus seems to reflect asterisk OUS, but from pi asterisk use the form asterisk OS Latin asterisk UIS would be expected. The ending is not attested in osco umbrian or Old Latin, which might have otherwise given conclusive evidence. The original form of the neuter nominative, vocative, accusative plural was asterisk U. Already in italic, this was extended by adding the O stem ending to it, like in the I stems. Topic. Adjectives Adjectives inflected much the same as nouns. Unlike nouns, adjectives did not have inherent genders. Instead, they inflected for all three genders, taking on the same gender form as the noun they referred to. Adjectives followed the same inflectional classes of nouns. The largest were the O, A stem adjectives which inflected as O stems in the masculine and neuter, and as A stems in the feminine, and the I stems. Present active participles of verbs in asterisk nts and the comparative forms of adjectives in asterisk yosh inflected as consonant stems. There were also u stem adjectives originally, but they had been converted to i stems by adding i stem endings onto the existing u stem, thus giving the nominative singular asterisk wis. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Pronouns. Declension of personal pronouns. Note, for the third-person pronoun, proto-italic asterisk as would have been used. Declension of relative pronouns Declension of interrogative pronouns Declension of demonstrative pronouns, asterisk is, this, that, asterisk xo, k, this. According to de Vaan, the Latin demonstrative pronoun hic is a combination of two parts, the pit root of asterisk xo from pi asterisk gi tilde asterisk ge tilde asterisk go and the pit suffix asterisk k from pi asterisk k. Until the classical Latin period, the suffix was stated to be detachable. Asterisk s to that. A combination of proto-italic asterisk is from pi asterisk a the and the suffix asterisk to from pi asterisk so, meaning, this, that, asterisk ol no, yonder, asterisk ol no eventually became asterisk ol lo in late proto-italic, before becoming ill in classical Latin through analogy with isti. Topic. Verbs Present aspect from Proto-Indo-European, the Proto-Italic present aspect changed in a couple of ways. Firstly, a new past indicative suffix of asterisk beta was created. This likely occurred due to the elision of word final asterisk i within the Indo-European primary verb endings e.g. pi present indicative asterisk h est a greater than pit asterisk est, but also pi past indicative asterisk h est. Secondly, the desiderative suffix of asterisk s, so became the future suffix in proto-italic. The subjunctive of this desiderative future, with a suffix of both s and a lengthening of the following vowel, was used to represent a potentialis and irrealis mood. Finally, while the subjunctive and the optative of pi were still in principle different moods, the moods became merged in post-pit developments e.g. Pit subjunctive asterisk esed versus optative asterisk seed which became Latin present subjunctive sit. The pi dual person was also lost within pit verbs just as it was in pit nouns. First conjugation This conjugation pattern was derived from the pi suffix asterisk a y t, and formed primarily denominative verbs i.e. deriving from a noun or an adjective. Example conjugation, asterisk dona, to give Second conjugation causative This conjugation pattern was derived from pi asterisk ayeti, and formed causative verbs i.e. expressing a cause from basic third conjugation verbs. Example conjugation, asterisk moan to warn Second conjugation stative 
This conjugation pattern was derived from pi asterisk at or the extended form asterisk a yeti, and formed stative verbs, i.e., indicating a state of being. Example conjugation, asterisk whale to be strong. Third conjugation. The bulk of Proto-Italic verbs were third conjugation verbs, which were derived from Proto-Indo-European root thematic verbs. However, some are derived from other pi verb classes, such as asterisk link pi nasal infix verbs and asterisk dikshko pi asterisk ski suffix verbs. Example conjugation, asterisk ed e, o, to eat. Third conjugation jo variant. This conjugation was derived from pi asterisk e suffix verbs, and went on to form most of Latin third conjugation io variant verbs as well as some fourth conjugation verbs. Example conjugation, asterisk g n j, jo, to come. Athematic verbs Only a handful of verbs remained within this conjugation paradigm, derived from the original pi root athematic verbs. Example conjugation, asterisk e z o m, copula, to be. In addition to these conjugation, Proto-Italic also has some deponent verbs, such as asterisk odi perfect present, as well as asterisk nascor passive active. Perfective aspect According to Rix 2002, if a verb stem is present in both the Latino Feliscan and Osco Umbrian Sibelian branches, the present stem is identical in 90% of cases, but the perfect in only 50% of cases. This is likely because the original pi aorist merged with the perfective aspect during the Proto-Italic period. Thus, the discrepancy in the similarities of present versus perfect stems in the two groupings of the Italic clade is likely attributed to different preservations in each group. The new common perfect stem in Latino Feliscan derives mostly from the pi perfective, while the perfect stem in Osco Umbrian derives mostly from the pi aorist. In the Proto-Italic period, the root perfect of pi was lost with oblaut being no longer productive. However, other pi perfect and aorist stems were preserved, such as the reduplicated perfect and lengthened vowel perfect stems, as well as the sigmatic aorist stem found in Latin dico, dixi. Sometimes, multiple perfect forms for each stem. For example, de vaan gives the forms asterisk fec, asterisk fak for the perfect stem of asterisk facio, and the reduplicated form is also attested on the preniste fibula in Old Latin. In addition, there were some new innovations within the perfective aspect, with the v perfect in Latin amo, amavi, and the u perfect moneo, manui being later innovations, for example. Example long vowel conjugation, asterisk fec to have done. Alternatively asterisk theta ek from pi asterisk da if pit is reconstructed at a stage before x, and theta had merged with f. Example reduplicated conjugation, asterisk fefu to have been topic development A list of regular phonetic changes from Proto-Indo-European to Proto-Italic follows. Because Latin is the only well-attested Italic language, it forms the main source for the reconstruction of Proto-Italic. It is therefore not always clear whether certain changes apply to all of Italic a pre -pi change, or only to Latin a post -pi change, because of lack of conclusive evidence. Topic obstruents Palatovelars merged with plain velars, a change termed centimization. Asterisk k greater than asterisk k asterisk g greater than asterisk g asterisk greater than asterisk g sequences of palatovelars and asterisk w merged with labiovelars, asterisk kal w, asterisk gw, asterisk w greater than asterisk k, asterisk g, asterisk g asterisk p, k greater than asterisk k, k, a change also found in Celtic. Labiovelars lose their labialization before a consonant, asterisk kc, asterisk gc, asterisk gc greater than asterisk kc, asterisk gc, asterisk gc. Obstruent consonants become unaspirated voiceless before another voiceless consonant usually asterisk s or asterisk t. Voiced aspirates become fricatives. Word initially, they become voiceless, while they are allophonically voiced word medially. Judging from Ozcan evidence, they apparently remained fricatives even after a nasal consonant. In most other Italic languages they developed into stops later in that position. Asterisk B greater than asterisk F, medially asterisk beta, asterisk D greater than asterisk theta, medially asterisk, asterisk G greater than asterisk X, medially asterisk, asterisk G greater than asterisk X, medially asterisk, asterisk S was also allophonically voiced to asterisk Z word medially. Asterisk senior, asterisk zr greater than asterisk theta r, asterisk r. 
Asterisk theta, asterisk x greater than asterisk f. Found in Venetic Vihagsto, Hvagsto, compare Latin facio. The voiced allophones asterisk, and asterisk remain distinct from asterisk beta in Latin and Venetic, but also merged in Osco-Umbrian. Asterisk tl greater than asterisk kl word medially. Topic vowels and sonorants asterisk l, asterisk r, greater than asterisk ol, asterisk or asterisk m, asterisk n, greater than asterisk m, asterisk n see above on vowels asterisk j is lost between vowels. The resulting vowels in hiatus contract into a long vowel if the two vowels are the same. Asterisk eu greater than asterisk au, asterisk o greater than asterisk a before labials and asterisk l. Topic laryngeals The laryngeals are a class of hypothetical pi sounds asterisk h, asterisk h, asterisk h that usually disappeared in late pi, leaving coloring effects on adjacent vowels. Their disappearance left some distinctive sound combinations in proto-italic. In the changes below, the hash follows standard practice in denoting a word boundary, that is, hash at the beginning denotes word initial, h denotes any of the three laryngeals. The simpler italic developments of laryngeals are shared by many other Indo-European branches, asterisk he greater than asterisk e, asterisk he greater than asterisk a, asterisk he greater than asterisk o, asterisk a greater than asterisk e, asterisk a greater than asterisk a, asterisk a greater than asterisk o, asterisk h greater than asterisk a between obstruents laryngeals are lost word initially before a consonant, more characteristic of italic are the interactions of laryngeals with sonorant consonants. Here, R represents a sonorant, and C a consonant. Hashtag HRC greater than hash ARC and CHRC greater than CARC, but hashtag HRV greater than hashtag RVCRHC greater than crack, but CRHV greater than CARVCIHC and probably chic greater than chick. Topic morphology General loss of the dual, with only a few relics remaining. Loss of the instrumental case. Topic post italic developments Further changes occurred during the evolution of individual italic languages. This section gives an overview of the most notable changes. For complete lists, see History of Latin and other articles relating to the individual languages. Asterisk x debuccalizes to h. Asterisk similarly becomes between vowels, but remains elsewhere. This change possibly took place within the Proto Italic period. The result, whether h or was written h in all italic languages. Asterisk theta e r asterisk e r greater than asterisk f e r asterisk beta e r in all but venetic. Compare venetic louder oboes to Latin liber, feliscan loifer ta, oscan lovefries. Asterisk beta, asterisk, asterisk, greater than Latin b, d, g. In osco umbrian the result is f probably voiced for all three. In feliscan, asterisk beta remains a fricative. Asterisk greater than G in Latin, which then develops as below. Greater than F in Osco Umbrian. Asterisk D greater than B in Classical Latin, although still retained in the archaic see Duino's inscription asterisk K, asterisk G greater than P, B in Osco Umbrian. They are retained in Latino Feliscan and Venetic. In Latin, asterisk G greater than V, W, except after asterisk N. Asterisk Z greater than R in Classical Latin and Umbrian, but not in Old Latin or Oscan. Final A Fem, SG. Nom, Newt. Place. Nom, ACC, greater than O in Osco Umbrian, but becomes shorta in Latin. Final Asterisk NS, ACC, place of various noun classes, Asterisk NTS, mask. Nom, SG, of participles, and asterisk NT, newt, nom, ACC, SG, of participles developed in complex ways, Latin vowel reduction, during the Old Latin period. This merged many of the unstressed short vowels, most dramatically, all short vowels merged, usually to, I, in open medial syllables. Furthermore, all diphthongs became pure vowels except for asterisk I and asterisk O, and occasionally asterisk OI, in initial syllables. Topic notes Topic References Backham, Gabriel C. L. M. 2009, the Latin Dialect of the Ager Falliscus, 150 Years of Scholarship, Part 1, Amsterdam, University of Amsterdam, ISBN 978-90-5629-562-2 De Vaan, McKeel 2008, Etymological Dictionary of Latin and the Other Italic Languages, Leiden Indo-European Etymological Dictionary Book 7, Brill Academic Publishers, ISBN 978 
978-9004167971 Zeller, Andrew L. New Comparative Grammar of Greek and Latin, Oxford University Press, ISBN 0-19-508345-8 Silvestri, Domenico The Italic Languages, in Ramat, Anna Giacoloni, Ramat, Paolo, The Indo-European Languages, Taylor and Francis Group, pp. 322 to 344 